Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and today I want to show you a proof of the famous Pythagorean theorem. And this is a, a geometrical proof, and it was uh, published in uh, Euclid's Elements, Book 1, published around uh, 300 BC. So here is a right triangle, and as a refresher, Pythagorean theorem says that if you were to measure the three sides of a right triangle, and you were to square the length of the biggest side, it would be equal to the sum of the squares of the smaller two sides. And here I have a right triangle, and as you can see, as I alter the value, uh, alter, alter the size of AB, or if I were to take this point C and kind of move it around, it, um, it appears to be true. But we want, to, we want to see an actual geometrical proof of this fact. And uh, I'm going to show you one that relies on a couple of theorems from geometry. Uh, first theorem that we want to be aware of is um, the area of a triangle is one half base times height, whereas the area of a parallelogram is just base times height. So what this means is if I have a triangle that actually shares a base with a rectangle or any parallelogram. Take a look over here. As I move this triangle around, the area of the uh, area of the rectangle is 11.66. This triangle being one half base times height, it's got literally the same base, the same line segment. And because of this parallel line here, you can see that the height of the triangle stays the same as the height of the rectangle. And this will come into play in the proof. Now, the way we do the proof is we are going to actually geometrically draw squares. And when we say that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, literally we're going to say that the area of this square here on AC and the square on BC, those two areas together equals the area of this bigger square. And the um, strategy that Euclid uses is he draws in a um, altitude from altitude to the hypotenuse. And what that altitude does is it splits this big square up into two rectangles. And what he's going to attempt to do is show that this square here has the same area as the rectangle on the left, and that this square over here, the medium square, has the area of the rectangle on the right. And that would make the two squares together equal the two rectangles together. But the two rectangles together equals the big square, and that would complete the, the proof. Well, the way he's going to do this is by drawing in some auxiliary lines. And the first set of auxiliary lines we're going to draw in are these. This is DB and CH. Now, what I have here are two obtuse triangles. One of them is a uh, is triangle DAB, and intersecting it with it is triangle CAH, and these are both obtuse triangles. The reason these triangles are important, um, obtuse triangle DAB is important because if you look here, we have that picture from before. We have this square, and the triangle has the same base as that square. So this triangle has exactly one half the area of this square. And we can see up here that, that that's true. We could also do a similar thing with the obtuse triangle CAH. This triangle here shares the same base as this rectangle here. And they have the same height also, which is the, the line segment AK. So the strategy is, if I can somehow uh, prove that those two triangles are congruent, that would also, uh, if the triangles are congruent, they have the same area, but each triangle, one triangle has half the area of the square, and the other triangle has half the area of this left-hand rectangle. So if I could prove the two triangles congruent, that would lead to the square ADEC having the same area as rectangle AHIK. And, um, Let's take a look. To, to remove some of the clutter from this picture, I can um, hide all of this. 
and we'll take a look at how we can prove this. Well, the first thing to notice about these two triangles is that DA is part of the uh, triangle DAB. So this side should be congruent to this side AC because they are part of the same square. But DA is part of this triangle facing this DAB triangle and AC is part of the other triangle CAH. Also because ABJH is a square we could say that AH is congruent to AB. And it's, it's pretty hard to, to, to see this sometimes, but uh, AH is, part of, is also part of triangle CAH, whereas AB is part of triangle DAB. Finally, this angle, the obtuse angle that each triangle has, angle DAB is composed of a right angle plus this angle CA, CAK, C or CAB. Whereas the obtuse angle in the other triangle, HAC, is also composed of a right angle, because this is also a square, plus this uh, same angle, CAH. So that makes this angle, this obtuse angle, the sum of the uh, right angle and angle CAB, whereas this is also. Okay, I'm going to clean this up a bit on the other picture. So in this less cluttered picture, we have that this side in TA is congruent to this side. They are part of the same square. This side here is congruent to this side. Those are part of the same square. That's two sides of the two triangles. And this angle has the same measure as this angle. Very unusual picture. I've never seen this in like a geometry textbook, but it's a it's an important set of con overlapping congruent triangles. They're congruent by the SAS property. So when we put the rest of the picture back in, now that these two triangles are congruent, that means they have the same area. But remember, the, the top triangle had the same area as, as half the area of the square, and the other triangle had half the area of that left-hand re rectangle. And what that tells us now is we have half of our proof done which is that the square has the same area as this left-hand rectangle. Well, now we can do the same thing on the right-hand side by drawing in these two segments. And now I have two other triangles. For instance, I have obtuse triangle GBA, which we're going to show, which has the same area as the square GBCF. And we also have this other obtuse triangle, uh, CBJ, which has the same area as the rectangle, BJIK. So we are going to prove these two triangles by the, uh, by the same reasoning. Now if I just concentrate on uh, these two triangles, uh, we've got GB in this triangle congruent to CB in this triangle because those are part of the same square. We've got JB in this triangle congruent to AB in this triangle because those are part of the same square. Those are two sides of the triangles. Uh, we have the right angle plus this is equal to this right angle plus that. That makes this obtuse angle equal to that obtuse angle. So those two triangles are congruent therefore they have the same areas and since those two triangles have the same areas that means that these two the square must have the same area as this uh, rectangle and remember from before we've already proved that this square has the same area as this rectangle and that concludes his proof of the Pythagorean Theorem. That's Book 1, Proposition 47 of Euclid's Elements, written in 300 uh, BC. It's a very clever proof. It only relies on congruent triangles and the fact that the area of a triangle is half base times height, where the area of a, of a parallelogram is just base times height. So I hope uh, you like this proof of the Pythagorean Theorem. It is a classic, but I don't think it's one that's very well known. So thank you.